All right, this is a subject that I've covered before. It's measuring capacitor leakage. Um, I have a video about measuring capacitive, capacitor leakage using just standard equipment that you probably already have. I'll put a link down below. Um, now, if you wanna make measurements at a very, very precise level, um, this is the way to do it. So Keithley has an application note on how you measure capacitive leakage. And you use an electrometer, which has, um, you know, many tera ohms of input capacity, uh, input resistance and stuff into a into an electrometer. And so you don't load anything down. It can measure very, very small amounts of leakage. Um, let's see, you know, up to 10 to the 16th ohm. These are, these are just crazy devices. Um, so if you're lucky enough to have an electrometer, then you can just put your capacitor under test um, into an electrometer. Now, sometimes they put a series resistor in here just in case your capacitor is shorted, uh, you don't blow things up. Uh, but uh, the, all, any, any current through the system is through that capacitor. And it just looks like a, a high ohmage resistor. So really all this is doing is it's measuring the resistance of the capacitor. And that resistance can be very, very high. And so it has very, very low leakage. But um, yeah, so, like I said, I've talked about this before, um, just with a standard uh, standard meter that actually has a, a microvolt setting, a micro, I'm sorry, a microamp setting. Um, you can basically test everything you need to test. And if you have a power supply that goes up to 100 volts, 300 volts, you can test the capacitor actually at its rated voltage, which is the best way to do it. Um, and, um, uh, people have been testing leakage of capacitors for eons. Uh, let's see here. Let me show you a couple. Um, this is the earliest one I found. Uh, so here is the DIY capacitor leakage tester in a nice little box with an LED. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't have LEDs back then. <laughs> uh, they had to use uh, neons. So it's a little neon bulb. And neon bulbs are very, very sensitive for current. And so if you have any, so your, your test uh, capacitor is out here. You, you rectify this 120 volts up to 300 volts so you can test your high voltage. Nobody had low voltage capacitors back then. Everybody had high voltage capacitors. So this is a voltage doubler. It gets you to about 200 and 250 to 300 volts. So now you're testing the actual capacitor at voltage, which is nice. And then if the neon glows, then your capacitor is bad. You don't want your neon to glow. Now there's a great takeoff of this that a, um, uh, I saw on a YouTuber, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I didn't go look it up, but I should have. And it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. His tester looks like this. Okay, here's the capacitor under, capacitor under test. This is some plus V, whatever voltage you want to run it at. Okay. And then what did he put here? Well, it's modern days. So he put, oops, modern days. So he put a, uh, he put a, a light emitting diode in. And what light emitting diode? A blue one. Because blue ones uh, turn on at, at microamp. Like one microamp, the L, a, a blue LED is, is still visible. So very small currents through here will say that your, that your uh, capacitor is bad. So let's look at that. Okay, here's my blue LED. Here's my current limiting resistor, just in case it's shorted out. And then here is the capacitor under test, and the blue LED is not lighting up. Now, if you want to make your tester real fancy, you can put a little push button on it. And what does the push button do? The push button shorts out the capacitor like this. And then see the lights on, and when you take your finger off the push button, woo, it disappears. So that, that's the test. So you can watch the test take place. <laughs> Once the capacitor is charged up to its full potential, then anything else that passes through the capacitor is just leakage. Up till then, it's charging current. You're watching the charging current through that through that uh, 10k resistor up there, and, and the voltage drop for the LED. But yeah, this is this is a poor man's poor man's uh, tester. Look at that. Dude, good, right? The LED goes out. Good. Woo. Okay. So, so that's, that's, that's just brilliant. I love that one. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. All right. I found this one, which, uh, is interesting. 
uh, another very old, very, very old circuit. It has um, the way that I taught in my, my video that I linked below. Um, it's just using a, a microamp meter. So this is a 50 microamp meter. And then any, any leakage through the capacitor will, will show on the meter, okay? And if you want to do the uh, short circuit thing like I just showed <laughs> over there, you can put a little push button on it so you can watch the, watch the meter. Okay, so a little, little push button -y thing. Now, instead of this one using a uh, 10K resistor like I did, they got fancy, and they put in a um, one milliamp current source. So this is a current source. Um, so there's a 5.6 uh, Zener diode, 5.6 volt Zener diode. You have about uh, 0.6 volts of drop in the uh, uh, base emitter junction. So you have about a 5 volt difference across this uh, resistor. 5 volts across a 4.7 kA resistor is 1 milliamp. So you're, this just limits it to one milliamp. So it's a constant current going through your tester. Okay. Instead of a, a, a resistor that may charge funny, this will be a constant, constant. So you'll get a straight line charge. You won't get a, a, a curvy charge. You'll get a straight line charge through the capacitor doing it this way. So, and then you can put in, you can make it uh, a couple batteries. If you put in couple batteries, nine volts and nine volts, and you know, that'll get you 18 volts. Put in another battery, you get 27 volts. So if you want to test at 27 volts, put in three batteries. Anyway, so that's, that's it. There are a still great debate as to whether you can test capacitors at low voltage, and that will tell you just as much as testing at high voltage. I'm in the high voltage camp. Always test your capacitors at their full rated voltage, or at least the voltage that they're being used in your circuit. If your circuit's using 100 volts and it's a 300 volt capacitor, well, test it at 100 volts. Um, but yeah, test, test your capacitors at their voltage. That's what I say. Okay, so we saw that one, we saw that one. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and then I found this one. Uh, this is a really old, a real old timer was doing a YouTube and he drew his own little uh, Dave CAD schematic. Um, and this is what he did. Uh, so this old timer said, uh, well, we want to measure low currents. Well, we, we have, his, his, he didn't have a microamp of a setting on, <laughs> on, his, on his meter back in the day. He's probably good to have milliamps. So he said, well, we'll have uh, current multiplication, right? So we have one transistor to multiply the current by 100. And then you multiply 100 by 100, and you get a lot of current multiplication. And then, uh, this wasn't too long ago, I guess, because he had an LED, right? So you put an LED here, and the LED lights up, right? And then you say, well, why, why does he have this uh, resistor in here? Well, why doesn't he just have this? Do the, do the multiplication. Why does he have this extra resistor in there? So we'll, we'll talk about that. First, I'll show the circuit. My circuit's a little bit different. Um, Everybody's going to do Darlington pairs a little bit different. Um, uh, just just the way that I wired it up on the breadboard, mine's going to look something like this. Okay, so I just I just grabbed what I had. 1K, 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 right? Just 1K, 1K, 1K. And these are 3904s. Okay. So, and our test capacitor is here, hooked up to some voltage plus V. Okay, so plus V goes, the leakage current goes through here, it gets multiplied by 100, it gets multiplied by another 100, and then it will light up the LED. Okay, so this should be pretty sensitive. Um, so let's go, let's go th give that one a try. Okay, it's exactly the same as this, basically, except I don't have that, that, that funny resistor in there, which we'll talk about. Okay, here we go. So we have a circuit. Uh, we can grab a capacitor to test. We can jam, oops, we can jam it in there. And uh, you can see the LED light up and then goes away. Uh, this one I got real fancy. I also put a little shorting. I put a little shorting switch across the capacitor so I can do the switchy thing. Everybody likes the switchy thing. So you can kind of tell that it's actually doing something. When you lease it, it's testing. And then the, 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 uh, uh, the LED goes away, right? So the LED goes away and it's, it's good if it goes away. It's good if it goes away. 
And then uh, if you had something that didn't ever go away, like this guy here, he's leaky all the time. Electrolytics are leaky all the time. And so let's put a little leak in there. You could wait forever for that thing to uh, finally charge up and get rid of its leakage and everything. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's gonna leak a little bit. So this circuit is very, very sensitive. So it might be too sensitive for your own good. Um, all electrolytic capacitors leak, they'll leak. And it's a matter of, in your circuit, how much leakage is acceptable. And on the video that I did previously, if you look up the actual specifications for capacitors, they leak. I mean, they're not guaranteed not to leak, they leak. And they leak quite a bit, I mean, believe it or not. But most of the time you don't care, right? If it's a rectification in a power supply, do you care if it leaks? No, not really. Um, so there are only certain cases where you really care about leakage. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you need to have a circuit that's kind of, do you want a, 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 a tester that tests 100 microfarads or do you want one that tests like uh, 0.1 microfarads, right? So here's, here's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Let's put in the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Let's see what he does. Um, so I gotta get it in my, get into my tester here. And so uh, you can see the leakage across my finger. If I, if I put just a tiny, tiny little bit of resistance on it, it, it sees it, right? So here's my, I don't even need a switch, right? Here's my poor man switch. I just put my fingers on it. <laughs> so don't bother putting a switch on, just put your fingers on it. So anyway, um, yeah. So let's get back to that. What is that, what is that resistor for? Okay, all right. What is that resistor for? Well, let's redraw it, okay? Let's redraw it like this, okay? We have plus V, we have a resistor, and we have an LED, right? Well, some of the current's gonna go that way and some of the current's gonna go that way. So this is going to steal current, all right? So the way this guy said to calibrate this thing was to put in a 100 microfarad capacitor and then adjust this resistor until the LED goes out, okay? And then, um, that will set you up. Um, so like I said, all capacitors are gonna leak a little bit. So let's say one microamp is what your capacitor does. It just leaks one microamp, okay? Well, you set this value here such that this side gets most of the current and this side only gets one microamp. Does that make sense? And so he found in his situation about 390 ohms uh, made it okay, all right? You could do it a little bit different, okay? In um, another way to, to do a, uh, something that looks more like this, right? You could just have the LED, you could just have the LED over here, right? And we were rerouting current around this side, okay, as our uh, calibration. Well, you could also calibrate it over on this side, okay? You could have your um, test capacitor over here, right? It's leaking through, right? And so most of the, 100% um, of the current is going, is going through here. You could also uh, steal some current going this way. So now part of the current goes that way and part of the current goes that way, right? And so you could put your calibration over here, right? And so I think this might be a better way to do it because, um, you, you can't really count on the beta of these things, right? In fact, this whole circuit, I would just avoid this whole page, right? Don't do it this way because these, uh, the, the, the gain of these transitions is gonna change with temperature and, and other things. And so um, th this is not gonna be super reliable. It, it's probably okay. But you can go over here and you could put maybe a, something like a 10 meg resistor or a, or a 50 meg resistor or something over here, right? And then the way to calibrate it, in fact, my circuit um, without, so the one way to calibrate it is instead of putting in a, a capacitor, put in a resistor. 
right? Calibrate it with a known resistor because you know how much current goes through a resistor, right? And so if I get rid of all of this and I have this circuit like I did over my little breadboard, um, at about 150 megohms, okay, I had a 150 megohm resistor, and a 150 megohm resistor was enough to light the LED, okay? It was right on the edge. So, so mine was probably way too sensitive for its own good, right? 150 megohms, I think I'm running, a, yeah, I'm running 15 volts, okay? So let's get out the calculator. Okay, let's get out the calculator here to uh, see what 150 megohm resistor in amps is. <laughs> uh, let's see, so we had 150, oh, we had 15 volts. I needed 15 in the numerator. We had 15 volts and we had 150 megohms times 10 to the sixth. So divide, that is 100 nano amps. Okay, that's a nano. Um, so yeah, 100 nano amps, uh, that thing would that thing would show. So if you have a circuit that is sensitive to 100 nanoamps, I think you're doing something well beyond a little crude tester like this. You'd better go to the electrometer. You'd better go get a Keithley. And uh, you can get cheap Keithleys if you're lucky. Um, I showed one before. Uh, I had, had a video on me uh, acquiring this thing. Um, it looks like a really cheesy voltmeter, but it actually, look at this, it goes down to nanoamps, right? So it has, uh, let's turn it on here. So it has, uh, yeah, 0.01 nanoamps. So the resolution of the thing is 0.01 nanoamps. So even though it says digital multimeter, it's actually an electrometer, okay? The 160B um, is an electrometer. So yeah, this would be really great for testing capacitors. So if you're luck lucky to get a hold of one of these, that'd be good. But uh, most people don't. All right, there you go. You can get fancy with these things. You can put in blinky lights. You can put in a meter that measures how much current is over here. You can watch it, watch it move. Um, you could act, if you have a really nice electrometer, you could put it in series two, but then why bother? <laughs> anyway, there you go. Just a little bit on uh, measuring capacitor leakage.